NFTs are a somewhat heated topic right now. Some people invest a lot of money into them and other people absolutely despise them because of the obvious scams that are based on NFTs. In this video, I'm going to give you a computer science perspective on what NFTs are and what potential no scam use cases there are besides the certificate of ownership for digital art. And let me know down below in the comments how often I'm going to say NFT in this video. Before talking about NFTs, we need to establish some basics on blockchains. The most famous blockchain is the Bitcoin blockchain. The Bitcoin blockchain is based on a peer-to-peer -peer network, meaning that there is not a single server or several servers owned by one person or company running the blockchain, but rather multiple different people running parts of the blockchain on their computers without a centralized owner. The Bitcoin blockchain can be seen as a database that stores information. The information stored is the balance of Bitcoin wallets and all the transactions made to transfer Bitcoin from one wallet to another. Every time new transactions are issued, a certain amount of them are bundled into a block, which a miner approves. When a block is approved, it is linked to the block that was approved before it, which forms a chain of blocks, hence the name blockchain. Once a block is approved, it cannot be changed and the information contained in it is forever stored on the blockchain. The whole blockchain is several hundred gigabytes large and is stored on all the nodes part of the peer-to-peer -peer network and forms a global state machine where each transfer can be interpreted as a state transition. While the global state of the Bitcoin blockchain only stores the balance of wallets, the Ethereum blockchain can store data of any type as key value pairs. For example, a key value pair could be my name cons as a value referenced by a key author name of this video. All those key value pairs represent the global state of the Ethereum blockchain. A state transition to a new global state, adding, removing or changing a key value pair is not done by transactions, but by running code, so-called smart contracts. The smart contract code is executed on the Ethereum virtual machine, which we will call EVM from now on. Citing the book Mastering Ethereum, for which you can find a link down below in the description, the EVM is a global singleton, meaning that it operates as if it were a global single instance computer running everywhere. The EVM provides its own bytecode for changing the global state of the blockchain. A compiler usually generates this bytecode from a high level language such as Solidity or Viper. For example, a Hello World smart contract in Solidity looks like this, which is very similar to Java. When a smart contract is written and compiled into EVM bytecode, it has to be added to the Ethereum blockchain first to run it. Therefore, the bytecode is sent to the Ethereum address zero in a contract creation transaction. This creates a new Ethereum account that is not owned by anyone, a so-called externally owned account, EOA, containing the bytecode and an Ethereum balance. To interact with the smart contract held by the EOA, one has to initiate a transfer, which does not have to include Ether, to the EOA address and some data that specifies the method that is called together with the arguments that should be passed. Then the bytecode with the provided arguments is executed on the EVM by miners on the peer-to-peer -peer network. When the execution is successful, meaning the code terminates without errors and the block, the call of the smart contract is in is approved, the global state of the Ethereum blockchain is changed. This could mean adding, changing or removing a key value pair or a change in the balance of Ether. Now that we established some background knowledge on blockchains and smart contracts, let us talk about tokens. According to the Longman dictionary, a token is a formless something that represents a fact, event, etc. A token itself has insignificant intrinsic value such as laundry tokens or arcade game tokens. Blockchain-based tokens can represent ownership, assets or access rights, compared to the real-world tokens such as laundry tokens where there is only a limited amount of them, the blockchain-based tokens can be generated on demand and used for multiple different purposes simultaneously. Tokens are such an integral part of the Ethereum blockchain that there is an official token standard on how a token should be implemented. This standard is the ERC20 token standard, which defines what methods and data structures a token contract has to implement. An ERC20 compliant smart contract can be seen as a bank that tracks the balance of tokens in different accounts and transfers tokens between them with a data structure that maps the account address to the token balance. The creator of the token contract can decide how and how many tokens are created and what they can be used for. 
For example, one could earn loyalty tokens for participating in a club's event, while the tokens are later on used to award special privilege depending on the person's token balance. As already stated, the ERC20 token standard allows the token creator to create as many tokens as they like and therefore they are fungible, meaning that the tokens are all the same and interchangeable which does not allow for tracking the ownership of a unique thing such as a collectible, house or an in-game item. While the ERC20 token standard tracks the balance of an account with a mapping of account address to token balance, the ERC721 non-fungible token standard, short NFT, tracks the ownership of a unique ID to an account address, which is the most important distinction between a fungible and a non-fungible token. As ERC721 does not place any restrictions on what a unique ID slash NFT represents, the creator of the NFT contract can add multiple different functions to the ownership of an NFT. So an NFT is in its essence an entry in a data structure of a smart contract that associates a unique ID to an account address and establish a one-to-one -one mapping, those meaning can be defined as the creator likes to. And by the way, when someone says they have an NFT in their wallet, that is technically incorrect because the ownership of an NFT is tracked in the smart contract and not in the balance of someone's blockchain wallet. The most well-known use case of NFTs these days is a certificate of digital art ownership. However, as digital art can be copied and shared without any restriction, such a certificate of ownership mostly has only sentimental value. So let me give you some examples where NFTs actually make sense. The first example is voting, whether be it votes on a company board or an election. NFTs can be used to validate that someone has the right to vote by proving the ownership of an NFT and can track that a vote has been cast. Because NFTs are unique, it is impossible to cast more votes than NFTs are owned by accounts and thereby help to prevent election fraud. Another great use case for NFTs are in-game items in video games. You could argue how is that different from a simple certificate of ownership. And yes, this can be the primary purpose of an NFT for in-game items. However, as one can enhance NFTs with their own functions and properties, the owners can be tracked and as well the leveling up of an item can be directly stored within an NFT. Take for example a Pokemon game where each Pokemon is unique and has different abilities depending on how it was trained, fed and treated. Because the NFT is associated with a Pokemon, the data of the NFT is stored on the blockchain and the entire progress of that Pokemon is tracked on the blockchain. Closely related to voting are tickets, based on NFTs. NFTs establish a cryptographically single point of truth for the owner of the ticket and the organizer of an event. Therefore, ticket forgery can be prevented as only the organizer can create tickets. Additionally, scalping of tickets can be prevented by adding a maximum resale price to the smart contract tracking the NFTs. Even after an event, NFT tickets can be used as loyalty tokens that allow for discounts and rewards at subsequent events. It is not uncommon to order goods coming from another country or even a continent in a globalized world such as ours. NFTs could provide means for tracking goods throughout their journey from the seller to the buyer. At each stop on its way, the NFT can track who handled the parcel and where. And it can also be used for authentication where the parcel is only handed over to the receiver that proves that they hold the corresponding NFT. The last example comes from my current line of work, academia. Even in the year 2022, it is pretty standard for German students to get a small piece of paper, a so-called shine, that proves the successful attendance of a course. This shine is then brought to administration, which copies the data into an Excel sheet and then files the shine for eternity in a binder. NFTs could help make those processes easier, faster, more secure and transparent. After a student finishes a course, the teacher adds an NFT holding the grade, semester and attendance, etc. to the student's account. The student and the administration can then quickly assess their performance by just looking up the NFTs that have been collected. NFTs and blockchains are still pretty new concepts for most people. And as it is the case with every new piece of technology, there's a lot of skepticism and badly bad actors. Take for example telephones and email scams which are still taking place today. It will take several years before blockchain technologies and smart contracts are considered for broader adoption. 
But with the switch from the proof of work to the proof of stake protocol, the energy requirement to run the Ethereum blockchain will fall several orders of magnitude and might play in the same ballpark as other online services and become a viable alternative or addition for other technologies. What are your thoughts on NFTs? Let me know down below in the comments. If you enjoyed this video and you want to keep on watching, check out this video over here.